What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? My name is Jade, and this is the Here Is What We Know podcast, episode 20. Simon, can you believe we've done 20 of these? Wow, what a milestone. <laughs> Good afternoon to the pair of you and anybody who's watching at home and on YouTube. It's good to be here, and it's actually good to be moving at a frame rate that is acceptable <laughs> for once. So it's good to see you all, and it's great for you to see me properly. So, uh, 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 and not a minute, not admitting that we had to completely change platforms to get you back in, Simon. But you're looking fresh, you're looking clean, and looking forward to a great episode. Hannah, how are you? Feeling great, thanks. How are you? All is well. I've had a very eclectic weekend, and it sounds like you have as well, Simon. A bit more saunering, I hear. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, <laughs> I've heard of the health benefits, and I just uh, I need to take care of myself. As the warmer months head towards the colder months, you've got to start taking care of yourself to ensure you don't catch the yearly flu going around. I heard there's one that's a bit, uh, you know, deadly this year. That you don't want to catch. So. Oh, I, I haven't heard. I haven't heard. I'll probably have to do some reading up on that. I think uh, it's like um, <laughs> A to the B or B A B A squared or something like that. Something. Uh, yeah, op- Opticron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping for those of you that are watching at home. We do interact with chat. So if there's anything that we talk about that you'd like to have an opinion on or provide feedback, whether positive or negative. Uh, please feel free to do so, and we can react to it. Uh, but before all of that, Mr. Anderson, are you ready for the question of the week? Oh, we've actually got one today. Wow. Oh, of course. I do my homework. I thought we've always got one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Stanley's more that... can't be slipping that much. No. It's more that I'm just saying that, hey, I don't even know what it is, so... Okay. I don't, so... I've been oh, yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. You're you're not gonna get previews all the time. Only when you do <laughs> things for me, you know that. that <laughs> okay, okay, that that went somewhere I wasn't intending. Anyway, the question of the week is: Does the world happen to you, or for you? Does the world happen to you, or for you? And just to repeat again. Um, if you are listening online, Twitch or DLive, we'd encourage you to have your opinion on this as well. Mr. Anderson, do you feel like you want to go or should I get Hannah yeah. to? No, no, yeah, I can definitely start us off. It's a good question. Does the world happen to you or for you? And I guess it depends on... Um, your mental state i don't know if you oh if you if you think life is happening to you could you think about that positively i guess if if you're enjoying things and good things are happening to you then life is happening to you so then would that be the same as for you yeah it's hard it's hard (laughs) to distinguish the difference it's hard to distinguish the difference i guess is where i'm heading but um I definitely don't think we have any control in the way that in our, oh, we have some control over the way things happen, but only a small percentage of the, the variables, which is ourselves, but you know, everything else that is out there, we can't really control. Really? So, so you're very much in the frame of things of fate. Well, no, not such fate. It's just that you can do as much as you want, but, things will always happen how they're meant to happen Mm. yeah and who determines that just 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 (laughs) the way life unfolds i you know like um every single thing that happened is that's happening in this universe is a series of interactions and and events and so the the whole sum of the past events the present events and um you add that together equal the future events that are going to happen and i guess that is what defines what's going to happen really so i I, i'm not being i'm not being like 
I don't mean to sound cocky about this, but you yeah. you believe that you believe that your past informs your future. To some degree, it's not like your your mm-hmm. your, your 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 past informs your future, but it definitely doesn't uh, confirm your future. You know, it doesn't oh. doesn't seal your future at all. It just oh. informs because you everybody it is human nature to to make decisions based on past experiences. So, by mm-hmm. subconsciously, your past does inform your future. But I mean, but go, trying I'm trying to get back to your question, and it's really I really want to try and get a coherent answer out, but. Does the does the, does life happen? What is it? Does the to world you does you? the world not even life? Does the world happen that. to you or for you? I mean, it's. I feel like saying it happens for <laughs> you is quite an egotistical perspective, unless you've got a grip of your ego. But I don't. Um, uh, I guess I'd settle more towards life happening to you. Or the world, sorry, the world happening to you. Excellent. Okay, Hannah, let's let's hear your views. I do think it is... Before you have a seizure, of course, because <laughs> this question might give you a seizure. I, don't, I swear, I mean, it may be <laughs> trying to think of an answer. Yes. Um, do you want me to say the question again? No, it's fine. Um... It was, I was thinking about it as someone was thinking and as, as you were talking, Simon, and I was literally thinking a coherent answer. Mm, that's what I was trying to think, trying to get out. And <laughs> one thing I was thinking, for or to, does the world happen for you or to? And I To did, you or for you. To you or for you. And the thing I was thinking about was, I definitely agree and think about the domino effect, um, the butterfly domino, do, butterfly domino butterfly effect. Yep. Butterfly effect definitely um, informs you, life. You believe in the butterfly effect? I think that other people around you can then um, then inform your um, what's going on around you and what's then happening. If you're then looking at um, at micro issue, micro issues, so micro micro things down to actually tell me what you call micro issues because I'm gonna need help with that black and slow and all that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm thinking not so much world world. Um, issues. I'm thinking about actually um, at a personal does, level. How does your life end up unfolding at a personal at a personal level, and then that then that informs how the world then um, unfolds. So um, yes, I. I do see it is um, oh that scene is broken isn't it sorry about that one <laughs> I'm a little bit wee small for me border <laughs> yeah I'll fix that sorry folks yeah. so it's, it's so what different. do you reckon Hannah boil it down to two you or four you I really struggle what do you think that yeah <laughs> um <laughs> Answer the question, mate. <laughs> Where is he? I would say to you because. Wow, both of you are to you. Am I right, Simon? You said to you as well. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to have a go. And yeah, you could say it's kind of not fair because I developed the questions, but this is just my opinion. So I would say the world happens for you because I feel that it's a question of will. And I think there are a lot of influences in the world, as you both actually touched on, that there are a lot of influences in the world that impact 
your decisions, but at the end of the day, everything that you experience is driven by your will. Like, that, there is nothing that will exist in your life without your will. So I believe the world happens for you. It's just that I feel that um, why does society make you forget how much power you actually have to influence the world? So that's my opinion. I, I, I definitely see, like, your <laughs> argument and... It's definitely a much more positive stance than what, <laughs> my, what myself or Hannah said. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, yeah, I was leaning towards, I guess, to you, but yeah, I, in a way it does happen for you because it, it, some people spiritually believe that we are all just part of a unified sort of larger um, connected consciousness experiencing reality. So if that were to be true, then yes, this whole world is happening for us because it's happening for us to experience it, like you said. I mean, take the concept of yin and yang, for example. Like, that, like mm -hmm. there's, no, there's, no, there's no doubt that we all go through things that limit us and have shaped us in ways that we would prefer not. And I don't want to minimize those. I don't, I don't want to tell people they don't exist. I, I have been pretty um, extreme in, the, in some of my views around self-development on the podcast before but I, so i recognize that but um what i'd just say is to tell people that the world is not trying to stop you the the world is trying to um i believe anyway check in with you to see whether you realize how powerful you are and if you don't realize other forces will take advantage and that's it Amazing. There's, definitely, there's, definitely, <laughs> uh, there's definitely just an endless amount of people waiting to take advantage of somebody who doesn't realize how powerful they are. Yeah, because, because it's like, we, we can talk about the Rothschilds and the mm -hmm. Illuminati, and we, we can say, like, oh, there's special people over there. But, you, you know, the more I've um, be, been a part of these podcasts, Simon, the more, the more I realize the only difference between us and them is because they know who, exactly who they are mm. and they know exactly what they can do. And, and I think, you know, these old tropes of go to school, get a job, marry a girl or boy, depending who you are, have some babies and die, please. You, you know, people are really into the um, simplicity of that concept. Yeah, there is, yeah. Uh, an upper echelon of lifestyle mm. that is just yeah unknown to so many people and the people living that lifestyle think the majority of the human race are just a, a waste of space and you know just because of the, the way they've manipulated society that like you know how it's ended up they just think mm. that you know majority of most people with their bad habits and and poor lifestyle and education and understanding of the world it's just yeah they they they, they treat us like cattle you know that these people when they're making decisions when they've because they've got the power to to make decisions that affect countries and and whole towns and things like that and they just they don't even they don't even think twice because like you said they they believe that they're so powerful that they know how powerful they are you know, it's mind blowing. Like I'm gonna absolutely love watching this show back and having it uploaded online because you both said to you, and I purposely went last because I genuinely want wanted to hear and and like I'm excited. I'm excited though because we're having this conversation, and, and I just unlocked something in the both of you and, mm -hmm. and um. I I really I really want more people to hear the message that they're they're more powerful than they realize. And yeah, I definitely want to say I. <laughs> you I, want to change your answer? Of course I do. <laughs> oh um, I I see it. I I agree with you, but um, I was literally seeing the world happens 
to you, whereas I feel um, that's more. Um, I I was looking as a to you, but yeah, I see see that you're right, and it makes more sense. I, I think I have been influenced a lot by my work, and I, I, I probably won't go into it here, but um, I, I've been aware that the people we see on TV, Simon, the the so-called elected officials, they're not really running things, bro. No, not at all, of course <laughs> yeah. And you've said that multiple times. Uh, and, and For the longest of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple times in different contexts. But it's becoming more and more apparent for me, um, with my closest closeness to the um, COVID response and things like that. But th this has been a mind blowing question of the week. Thank you guys. Mm. Uh, like it turned out exactly as I hoped, and and I could not be more thrilled. Again, if you have a response or a reflection on the question of the day, please leave it in the chat. Or if you're watching on demand, we'd love to see you in the comments. But without further ado, I think I'll take the first story of the day, uh, Simon. Or actually, did guess. you did you want to go first? I didn't have a link from you though. Yeah, I'd love to go first actually. Um, I don't, I don't have a link, but I'd just like to give you guys a quick update. Yeah, it might be good to go to you, then we can release you. That that'd be cool. Um. So last week I talked about the fuel prices the increase in fuel prices and the interesting thing is I actually found a corresponding story to that this week um, New Zealand where we live is number 10 in the world the happiest country it's ranked number 10 out of the world. We're, the, we're the happiest place to live or something like that. I think it's all the article, yeah. Yeah, so... So, um, are, are we number 10? We're number 10. Oh, yikes. Wow. We're, we're fallen by um, a lot. No, we're, we're above. We're above where we were last year. And, <laughs> and we're above in Australia is like number 12 or 13 or something. Yeah. And the reason why I kind of related that to my story about um, hiking fuel prices is they were highlighting how great New Zealand is that you can go bike riding. So saying, hmm, it's all right. Fuel's gone up. Just go take your bike out. Go bike riding. So I thought that was interesting. And then on the other side of, side of it, I saw... We're struggling to sell, another article, we're struggling to sell um, cruise tickets, please help us. Um, now we know that there was a COVID outbreak on a cruise ship and I thought I'd just have a look into this and literally on their promotion they highlight that they've got an official PCR lab on board. LOL. I'm like, wow. What's that for? <laughs> what are you what are you gonna do if someone tests positive? Why go to all that trouble to have a lab and you can buy those tests? Yeah. What the heck? So it's basically just saying we've got an official nurse on board that What's wrong with the rat test? Well I, I think that's probably what it will be. But but that's what that's what they're trying to say in the advertisement because you know they're they're struggling to sell them and they're and they're saying it's two thousand eight hundred discounted right now. Go for it. So I thought mm, that's interesting. I gotta ask though, Simon, have you been mm. using your car less or about the same since all this? Gas price malarkey. I've been going on a few surf trips, so I actually probably have been doing the same amount of driving. Don't drive for work because I'm working from home, so it's really mm. just kind of evening time and weekends. So it'd be a couple of evening surf trips or out and play some golf. 
so not it's it, i do minimal driving so it's not really affecting me too much but it's definitely costing a little bit more i need to put in a little bit more each time a little bit quicker yeah yeah i'm driving way less like I, i'm waiting for my metaverse suit to uh, show up Simon <laughs> and then I'm never leaving the house but yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm out and about way less now and it, uh, it's still interesting to see um, what may happen <laughs> with um, the fuel prices and how it may change so it'll be interesting to see and hear what stories you guys have for us and but I just thought the last thing I'd leave you with is um, finally um it's really cool to see actually they've done an article on you know we had a protest done at um at the beehive and they've done an article actually highlighting who the who the people were and but my one time favorite article i thought was really cool that i saw the freedoms and rights coalition um in christchurch has been doing weekly protests um, and the Christchurch um, City Council has now been sending them sending them bills for for actually managing um, traffic. You said to me earlier traffic. Yep. Um, and basically, they they've got three outstanding, and it's totaling so far 50,000 <laughs> <laughs> so and Lol. is that a record and <laughs> that is literally they're saying well why should it be put on rate payers and then they've they come back and said well we've been nice <clears> to <throat> the meeting and we've had hundreds <laughs> and thousands of rate payers in our protest, um, and he's also said in in the in it. Well, I'm a rate payer, so hmm. so that's an interesting thing. And I think actually, I'd really like to see how do we actually have people start listening in our country instead of just slapping bills on other people. So. I really look forward to seeing how changes can be made and I'm really excited to see the outcome to to listen to one of Jade's Jade's stories. So um but I will leave you guys Simon's are honestly way more interesting than mine. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't had a preview of like, Simon's. Like, that's, that's not just guessing him up. He's really good at the story business. I he really had, is. I haven't had a preview of Simon, so that's why I, I see you also. <laughs> um, but but yeah. thanks, and an amazing yeah. uh, cap of the week. Recap of the latest news around COVID. We, we really appreciate it. And, and um, um, I'm just, just going to say, you haven't... Um, Put up any articles today, but I need them for the links because we can't be posting podcasts like this without the links. So make yeah. sure you get them to no, me. I can do them. And yeah. just to let you know, it's great to know that our and it was big, big numbers dropped um, since um, in COVID times. It's gone from you know something like eighteen thousand to. 1,200, so... Really, Simon? No, I was no, like... Nobody's getting tested, that's why. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then another thing that they've also said is that there's been nine deaths and it's also been announced their ages, and I also question probably about eight of those people were probably could have been related to other health their conditions. Age. Yeah. Their age. One was 90, two were 80. Um, the rest was 70 and 60 or something. Or no, no yeah. one was 60, I, can't, I think. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like between... 70 plus, I'm sure. It was 50 oh. to 90. One was 50. Oh, 50, yeah. yeah. 57 and, yeah. 
So yeah. Okay, well. You guys have a lovely podcast, and I'll go and get you those links. Yeah, you kind of. They probably died of the vaccine rather than <laughs> COVID. So you kind of busted my flow, but since we're talking about COVID, I'll just touch on um, one thing. So. Simon, the picture quality for me is really tough. I don't know if you can read this, but what I, what I'm trying to point out for the people at home is that the New Zealand government really quietly announced um, that un watch yourself there unvaccinated people can return to New Zealand. Now it used to be a requirement that you had to be double jabbed, all that business to get a vaccine certificate. They quietly announced, and I mean quietly, by not going on a stand-up and saying, hey, vaccinated, unvaccinated, we look forward to seeing you. They just put a couple of sentences on the COVID-19 website. We'll provide the links there, but what, what do you think of that? It's um, obviously, uh, they've, run some, they've run some PR some PR role plays and thought, yeah, we need to do this as quietly as possible so nobody pulls our pants down and spanks us with this. I mean, gosh. They, <laughs> you'd think that sort of, you know, move, historic move, would that would warrant a stand-up to celebrate. It's, you know, quite historic that it's safe enough to let unvaccinated tramplers into New Zealand without isolating, you know? We were, we were a lockdown country no one in or out and now we're letting unvaxxed people in just willy-nilly things have mildly changed yeah it means we've got that so-called um support structure among us to to be able to accept them i mean personally i think that's all a bunch of claptrap but um i'm grateful um that that people regardless of their vaccine status will be able to return I look forward to what this means to the economy. Um, I study. I have the... a question for you. Okay, go ahead. I was gonna say. So, how does it feel to be governed by a poll? Like, all it takes is for Labour to to poll badly, and we get laws and rule changes overnight. We get our gas taxes <laughs> off. So, so I'm saying, how does it feel to be governed by a poll? Well, there, there are a couple of ways to look at that because you could say that um, the current government are not really invested in what they say is important and they can be easily swayed by public opinion. On that basis, I'm, I'm quite happy for them to be, for us to be governed by a poll. But as with all things, I, I think what this country uh, really needs is strong leadership. Now, I'm not, that wasn't a um, that wasn't an advertisement for national by any means. I'm simply saying what this country needs is strong leadership. I don't care who does it, but right now we don't have it. And um, actually, if you were to ask me, you, you know, and allow me to be purely honest, I'd say. The sooner we can get to blockchain governance, the better. Because I don't, I don't feel, like, it seems like really antiquated for 165 odd people um, to be making decisions for five odd million. Yeah. Yeah, when, when most people could connect to a internet connection to allow... <laughs> you know, yeah, to influence a blockchain in an election, mm. vote on policy and, and and things like that rather than people to make decisions for us. But I'm getting a headache, so that means um, I've probably heard about all the COVID uh, propaganda that I can take for one day. Uh, Simon, I, I do have a story before we leap into one of your rabbit holes, if you'll allow me to. Um, yeah, cool. So, um, Snoop Dogg has bought Death Row Records and intends to turn it into an NFT Web3 based business. Um, he, he's made such an epic push to make NFTs a thing. He's actually pulled a number of his Death Row based albums 
from streaming streaming services quite a few of them i actually personally um enjoy the old classics doggy style and things like that um yeah they're gone mate they're gone he snoop dog believes the future is in nfts and um a, l a little bit down the article it goes on to say that on um March 14th, I believe it is. Uh, Snoop Dogg released Death Row Mix Volume 1 for sale as limited release NFTs. So it wasn't a one-off one. It wasn't a one-off one. I think they sold a maximum of a thousand copies. Yep, there it is right there. And it's a mix of some people from the, the Death Row roster with spaces in the nft for you to create your own verses <laughs> that sounds so gimmicky <laughs> and and like yes you're right that does sound gimmicky and then i go to okay well given given the nature of nfts and the tradability of them does Snoop Dogg have like like this unfounded like faith in blockchain technology for protecting his copyright? Because let's say I buy the NFT currently trading at about seven hundred dollars. By the way, let <laughs> let's say I buy one what, of the an album. No, it's one track, bro. One twenty-five minute track that that sort of like a. Uh, a, a remix and, and it's got like instrumental bits throughout it that you can tr spit your spit your rhymes on right so imagine if you bought that for the 700 or whatever it is today you've done your track you've released it to all your mates and then you go oh yeah i'm broke i'm gonna sell this nft do you still have the right to keep the track that you've um put rhymes on Gets real messy after a while. I wonder. I mean, there's prob there's no like, <laughs> cop there's no copyright law that has ever been written to to consider NFT. You know, <laughs> like it's such a different way of ownership. Yeah, that this so, article this article doesn't cover it, yeah. but I'll see if I can find another one. Um, Snoop Dogg already already also has a relationship with sandbox um sandbox is the nft sort of metaverse marketplace um that they're very highly integrated they have their own uh token ecosystem the whole thing uh full disclosure i'm actually a little bit invested in that project <laughs> and that project so i've been tracking snoop dogg's involvement but he's already earned several million dollars just just from having a pixelated avatar of of himself as part of the sandbox metaverse so absolutely amazing do you have any mm. i haven't heard you talk too much about the metaverse what what are you vibing about the metaverse at the moment i think it's evil man I, yeah i don't want to go into that. yeah <laughs> I think, evil I think, in what way I though i think it's more just a distraction i think it's getting lots of good men to focus on things that aren't real while there's lots of things happening in the real world that are going to change their lives permanently like, oh that that's a double-edged sword that one i don't know how to take that but you might be right actually you might be right yeah i mean my you know, my fault my feeling is that there is yeah, the the next immediate or the, our immediate future in terms of the six months to a year there's potential for you know this war to escalate to some sort of global conflict um and then you know, your metaverse isn't going to matter when there's no global internet network because it's a all-out war and countries have shut down so that nobody can spy on their communications and things like that and all networks go just in, um you know internal only mm. no and yeah your bitcoin's only as good as the bitcoin in your country 
I know you've seen that too, and the infrastructure. Like, like I, I, I've not really thought about the infrastructure deeply because I mean, Amazon servers are all buried in the Egyptian desert kind of thing, and then I'm just here thinking, well, Elon will keep the internet on, won't he? Who knows? I mean, why, why we, we shouldn't trust them? <laughs> you know, like you, you, you can. You can pre- prepare for that to be a possibility, but I wouldn't put all my faith in that happening. Really interesting, and that's probably a really good um, segue. You want me to go straight to the link uh, you sent me earlier, Simon? Just just throw one up and we'll just go with it. Yep, let, let's see. Let's get you there. All right, what do we got? Oh, man, this has just been the most amazing thing that's <laughs> happened. I don't know if there's anybody watching now that would remember so far <laughs> ago. Probably even before here is what we know was the thing, maybe. <laughs> this was <laughs> when we were just doing um, podcasts. There was an incident where Hunter Biden apparently, you know, like, either three days no sleep or, you know, just absolutely dragged out of his mind damages his laptop and leaves it at a repair shop and somehow forgets about it and this person um tries to get in contact with him hunter biden doesn't get in contact with him doesn't pay for the laptop and so they go looking through it and they figure out what's on it and then they try to hand it in nobody wants to take it and they give it to and somehow it gets in the hands of rudy giuliani trump's lawyer and everybody they they got like 50 plus uh cia uh uh something they what do they call them professionals or something like that to say that it was russian disinfo um but uh the the if they if if they actually repeated exactly what these um professionals said it said that there's no evidence to support that this is rushed that it, this is Russian disinformation but in this situation it is a likely possibility that it still is and so they said that and then the whole media right around the election between Trump and Biden uh, right before it they were <clears throat> they they just they just buried the article saying it was Russian disinformation and nobody needed to look at it people some um, some newspapers were like, um why we they wrote articles saying why we aren't covering the biden laptop you know like they just did everything they could to silence it and it's come out in the last week or so a few days that the laptop is confirmed as hunter biden's or some of the material on the laptop officially some of the material on the laptop has been confirmed to be true so emails and photos and things like that and um the 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 most i guess um damaging thing about the e- in the in the laptop is the emails that talk about um biden and his position at a ukrainian uh, in uh, energy company taking payments for arranging meetings with the big man okay hold on hold on man. yeah yeah because I, I i i was sitting around thinking about this week's show and i'm like wait there's a war in ukraine there was a whole hunter biden thing working for the energy company it's been confirmed that he knows very little about uh, energy as a as a product or a, or as a service. He's basically on the board, um, make, making general statements around um, leadership and you, you know things that don't really add a lot of value to the energy business. Simon, does this war have anything to do? with hunter biden and the biden administration yeah 100 percent. we were talking I'm, I'm sure we were talking about all of the bio labs in ukraine in one of the in one of our other live streams or is that something we talked about no no that that was, that was last yeah. week yeah yeah, yeah that exactly. was last yeah. week so that's that's all the biden administration you know like all of these american ngos which is the cia you know standard operation for the cia they create these um these private companies that they that win government contracts that then get established in um in ukraine or they fund grants they set up you know research um 
companies that fund grants to these Ukrainian bio labs, and they're sending millions and millions of dollars to these labs over in um, in Ukraine, funding um, you know bioweapon research, basically. And so, yeah, the 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 laptop potentially, but definitely the relationship um, that uh, Hunter Biden facilitated between Ukraine and Joe while he was the vice president for Obama. So, so help me understand. So, so Russia borders the Ukraine, right? Now, that might, that might sound like a really black question right there, but I, I'm not overly invested in all this. So, yeah, on Russia's uh, western border, like so, southern western border. So then, would it be misinformation for me to then ask, was this always the plan? To have beef with Russia and have someone like Hunter Biden in the mix because I remember you also talking about a bunch of paintings that Hunter Biden slapped up and got millions of dollars for. Uh, is this yeah, all? Yeah, he started an art career. <laughs> yeah, very is it, recently. Is this all interconnected? Because I, because I feel like there's more going on, and you'd be the only one to really lift that lid for me. I mean, yeah, it's really hard. It's all kind of just speculation because it's just happening so far away from us. You know, like, we're nowhere near any of just the stuff that's happening on the ground. But the the main, I think, the main driver, and this is really just based on reading the translated um, speeches from Putin um, and just a few of, of the analysis I've seen people put together on social media. But the the nato organization has spread east towards russia to obviously undermine the the russian country because they they don't want a strong russia and america which america is the army people say for israel and so the israel don't israel don't want russia to have a gold-backed currency to be able to withstand any sort of financial shock that's going to come um to the rest of the world and so they want they want to dismantle this country and so they basically goaded russia into a war which has gone back all the way to back towards 2014 when the cia um uh funded and pushed for the 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 revolution in ukraine and changed the 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 person in power who was much more westernized and and and, um you know agreed to 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 nato's sort of um direction and then there's this nazi group in ukraine called the azov battalion and other offshoots that are actually um bombing and killing and you know torturing people in the uh east eastern part of ukraine with borders against russia you know lots of these people living in that area um identify as russian or uh ethnically russian and uh, in ukraine for whatever reason whether it be the the work there and they've been begging for russia for the last like few years at least for you know some help because these people are basically just killing them without any sort of repercussions it's very similar to the situations in the the middle east with america um but except you know russia borders this country and but and so so it and what i say and the similarity is that it's a big powerful country going into a smaller country to um basically settle a situation that they think is is unjust mm. and it's been it's been spun into a hostile attack and um, you know, an atrocity when really it's it's uh, it was supposed to be in the most precise measure to counteract what he th- was thought was you know ethnic killings and you know the the establishment of Nazi power within Ukraine. Hmm. That's absolutely mind blowing. Hmm. So so he. Your camera's frozen, by the way, looking at you. Oh, no, it really has. I'm sorry. Uh, Quite convenient for me, because I can pick my nose now. (laughs) Uh, Give me a second here. I'll try to fix that. Um, 
so, so now that going back to Hunter Biden, um, I'll mm. just pose a question so I can work on my camera and you you can sort of give your two cents on it. Um, so now that we know that some of the content in this laptop is true or valid, now what? Well, I mean, it definitely, it definitely probably would have changed the the election a little bit. I mean, th to be fair, because Biden won, it's like, th th it didn't matter what happened, Biden was always going to win. There's no way that man is the most popular president in the history with getting the most amount of votes out of anyone. But nonetheless, um, you know, it could have helped. It could have been a different election if right before people were voting, there was a laptop that proved that the um, vice president's son was taking large cash payments from international uh, politicians and, you know, uh, <laughs> self-made men, entrepreneur, mafia type people, uh, so that they could meet the vice president. And... Mm, there is well most people are saying that ukraine is is a hub for uh human trafficking and money laundering so oh wait they, a minute wait a minute wait a minute so we we're just gonna drop that in like that you're just gonna do that to me we've been talking about human traffic trafficking for quite a while on this show how are you just gonna drop that and why haven't we heard reports of that lately well maybe that's why because it's such a hot spot that nobody's allowed to talk about it but i mean i don't have anything on hand to pull it up but i've had multiple people um say the same thing to me that uh ukraine is basically yeah uh, a well-known spot for human trafficking and money laundering especially for americans so I really have a headache now. So, so we've yeah. got we've got all this poor Ukraine stuff because they're being invaded. Putin truly believes there are Nazis killing killing Russians in the Ukraine. Is is that what you kind of you're not saying that? But is that what you're hearing? Is that is that what I heard you say you heard? So. The, the the thing about the people get, getting killed in Ukraine to start the conflict, that is direct from Putin, from his speech before he even um, made any sort of moves. He put out a speech to kind of dictate um, why he was doing it. And he was calling out to the Nazis that were in the Ukraine country. You know, like, it's, it's not like this is some weird um, underground skinhead group. It's an actual bona fide <laughs> part of the military division called the Azov Battalion, which is all Nazis. They wear Nazi symbols. They believe they are superior. They, you know, they don't like blacks and Jews and all that nonsense. You know, they, they are, you know, just like the German version of Nazis. They but have very similar views. And the, all of this sympathy that the western media have drummed up all the politicians have created all the money that people have donated all of the aid that the americans and other countries have given formally all of those guns and weapons going straight onto the street into the hands of nazis apparently like just the crime rate and the murder rate and the gun injuries in ukraine has just shot up because all of these everyday people have been giving guns and they've just gone crazy in the streets and just okay and I really want to touch on something you sent me earlier in the week. It's mm -hmm. uh, like we could play this video, but I think I think people know about it by now. It was the um, Joe Biden referring to mm. Kamala Harris as the first lady, and then saying the first lady's husband has COVID, like. I want to point to this because it's as someone sort of not as in it as you are with the research and everything. I'm like, this guy has dementia, right? 
It's it's like a poor. <laughs> it's not even dementia. It's like he's. It's a poor Walmart version of a human. Like it's, it's what it's what somebody would try and create to to pretend to be an old man. It is. I mean, it is beyond broken, right? Okay, what I I am gonna play it just for it is thirty seconds. I think people yeah. people at home can kind of bear it, so we are gonna watch it. Take a look at this. Stage, but that's enough too. Look at the stage. But there's been a little change in the arrangement of who's on the stage because of the first lady's husband uh, contracting COVID. But uh, look at this room and what you see. That's right. She's fine. It's me. That's not together. The second lady, the first gentleman. How about that? Anyway, mm -hmm. stage. I mean, that is the lead. An interesting way to say president, the first lady's husband. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is the leader of the free world, Simon. Yeah, he's one of the most powerful men. The man with the hand on the nukes. He's got a suitcase that follows him around everywhere with those buttons ready to go at any time. What does this mean? Like, like speaking of the world happening to you or for you, I think... This really is the element of to you, is it not? Because a lot of people wouldn't realize the layers of complexity underneath. Well, I mean, to, to go with your argument, it is happening for us so that we learn and can <laughs> acknowledge what is going on and wake up and take some action. Like, you really challenge me every week, and I'm just wondering, what what is your big takeaway on, on this week with what you found out about Hunter's laptop and where, where it all fits? I mean, it just goes to show that the reporting we get, I mean, it, the Hunter Biden laptop really didn't feature much in New Zealand, I don't think, I can't recall much of the coverage, but the way that it was systematically banned from social media like you know it was one of those banned topics that if you said something about it you'd get removed and it was instantly dismissed as complete a hoax and fake you know even though immediately all these people verified with you know the other emailed parties <laughs> in these chains that they were shown verified the same emails you know they, they just instantly dismissed it as russian disinformation um it's if that's what they if that's how they're spinning those sort of stories and doing that sort of coverage so like how how impartial are they obviously we know that the majority of journalists are, are incredibly biased and are beholden to the people that make their money um and and so it's just I guess it's just an example. It's a really clear example of people are looking for any sort of evidence to, to back up the claims that we're saying that the people in power are lying to you or trying to make you think a specific reality that is not the exact reality we live in is what is happening. You know, they right before them, one of the most important elections ever, you know, whether Donald Trump was going to be in power for another few years, they, they just completely dismissed and disintegrated the story into nothingness nobody reports on it and then it comes out a few years later when it doesn't matter now that it was all true there's some really fucked up shit on the laptop especially even the personal matters like there's some real weird shit the dude fucked his dead brother's wife he's been really creepy to his nieces they've written about him being really weird and touchy in their diaries you know just their family is really fucking rotten to the core and they're in the white house they're the son of the vice president at the time who's now the president was taking cash payments from dodgy ukrainians to arrange meetings with the president that's weird you know and you're not actually allowed to do that is that isn't that a crime 
probably i mean i'm not up to date with the exact details of american law but it sounds like it should be what one thing one thing i need one thing i need help with okay th this is all this is all going to shit ukraine is falling putin's doing whatever he needs to do why did he not pull the shit when trump was around um I mean, if you listen to the Nelk Boys podcast before it got deleted, he basically said that he warned him, you know, that that he... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never, I don't know how true this is. This is what <laughs> Trump said very recently that he was in touch with Putin during his time in presidency and made it very clear that, you know, that Russia should be quite tame while he's in power and whether that was any sort of deciding factor or not. But... Um, Excuse me. Uh, the, what, so what's happening? The reason, if you follow Putin's logic, the reason Putin's going into war is not in the best, was not in the best interest of Ukraine. The reason, and and then America is then fanning the flames of this conflict, trying to make it seem as bad as possible, so that they can invest more heavily in the production and and you know business of making money during a war that's not in the best interests of, of america it, it, you know none of these events that are happening are in the best interest of the people making it so you've got to wonder whether it's just a cons you know like a connected effort of stupidity or is there somebody pulling strings higher up that are making these countries and these and these organizations do these things Mm, and then I, I know I said I had one more question but I have another mm. one how does this all tie in with the great reset then because that's something you've also covered recently like how are, yeah. how are, how are regular folk like myself so supposed to like because I don't disagree with anything you've said and I've enjoyed you know do, doing my own research which is really important you got to do that um how does that, how does that tie in well what my best guess is it's you know new zealand's been uh looking at i think it's gone to its second or third reading already about it you know the digital reserve bank and looking at a digital currency america of doing the same thing and looking at a government digital currency all of these countries ukraine's already linked their vaccination status to this uh you, you know they've they've brought in a a socialized payment because of the situation they've linked it in with this app so you get like your benefit linked in with your your id and your vac status so they that you know that's what they want for the whole world they want they want your id your bank account your money your vac status your your health information all of it linked to a digital booklet of all of your personal information and they yeah. want to set all they want to set all the rules so that regardless of anybody who's got wealth if they don't behave like they want them to they can just just d delete their wealth or transfer it away or freeze it and so what they're going to need is a way for the current currency to fall away so what do they do they've created just rampant inflation by the u.s because the u.s dollar was the gold standard currency for most trading they just turned america into a money printing machine um during the pandemic and now that country has basically lost all of a lot of value in its dollar which affects all of these global markets if all these global markets just crash based on the the value of money just just disappearing then it's a really good cause for them to say hey we'll look at the solution let's just input this digital solution for you guys and you know it's really handy it's all everything's all nice and tied up in one package just sign up with your you know your vac status and your and all your details and if you if you say something bad about the government on your facebook profile um your bank account gets frozen or if you drive like you know too many kilometers in your car your bank account gets frozen and your car stops working because it's all electronic and they'll just turn it on it'll just won't turn on until you know your weekly quota resets that's the world they want and a giant war that russia starts with ukraine and the rest of the west is a perfect breeding ground for a digital reset which is what they want you know a one global currency connected world 
It's all in your papers. The, this might sound unrelated, but I, I really just want to, like, I was doing some research, and I know you've talked about it on the stream, about the establishment of the education system in the first place. It was it was started by the Rothschilds, and what. And one of the one of the quotes that I found is, "We don't want people that will think; we want people that will work." And I can't help. I can't help think that this is like version three point two of that movement. They're calling us the fourth industrial revolution. Okay. Right? You know, they they are really pushing for this put this global adoption of everything connected to the internet you know they want you to sit in a little pod with a vr headset on and ignore the outside world and you know just just be a consumer and just just making people money there are, they don't want yeah there are quite a number of people that would heavily benefit if everyone allowed the world to happen to them Yeah. Happen to them? Yeah. Uh, there, there are, there are a small number of people that would heavily benefit if people would just allow the world to happen to them. Yeah. That's kind of what's happening now. <laughs> amazing. Oh, amazing. Like, like, how do you not get depressed about that though? I, I suppose. You have the resilience of the knowledge, and you can see it coming. Well, yeah, you just that—that that is the only reason why I try to do as much, not research, I guess, but um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, observe, observe, observation in terms of what is out there, and in terms of information that's coming in, just so I can be as prepared with what's coming um, in the future. Um, it's probably, I mean, it's too late to pull it up, but there's one of Grimes' um, music albums. It's a really weird coincidence that um, it's like uh, Grimes is obviously, you know, Elon Musk's, I think their ex, ex-wife now, I don't know if they're dating yeah, still. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've, yeah. they've got a couple of kids. Um, her, her, her music album, is, it's, uh, he's got these weird, like, it's like hieroglyphs and symbols on the stones. And... Um, you know, some of them it, it goes like virus, uh, syringes, uh, and then bombs, and then aliens, and then it's like it, all these little icons kind of show kind of what a progression through our events have gone. And then it, so if you're following what her album says, um, aliens, we've got, you know, we've got war and then aliens to to look forward to. And I don't, I mean before the pandemic there was well i think it was before the pandemic right maybe well just as it was getting started they started disclosing all of the ufo stuff you know they admitted that all of those ufo footages were, were real and that, that so maybe they were um you know just disclosing the fact that there are um alien spacecraft out there and that that could potentially be something that we could see more of in the future and Trump like casually announced the space force, and then I yes, re- that's right. I I, I I remember one, like this was right near the end of the presidency. He like full on admitted that he was taking meetings. I don't know what this means. Might have been Zoom or whatever, but he was taking meetings with a galactic federation. And I I, I think it was earlier this week I followed up with you. I'm like, have you heard anything about this Galactic Federation? Because it's kind of gone a bit quiet. No, I think I don't think it's anything real. Actually, I think it's just a bit of a a bit of a lie. Really? Who benefits from that lie? Um. The people that I guess wield the power that that lie <laughs> creates, right? I, mean, I don't know. I it's it's a bit above my head, but if um if 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 people think that he's making these meetings, then he might well wield some power that he may not have over other people. I don't know. Mm. Uh, 
interesting thought and a good one to sort of put a pin in and land on. We are at the top of the hour. So, Simon, that was a lot of stuff you packed in to your segment there. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I guess it's pretty similar to my final thoughts every week. Which kind of roughly summates to like you know don't trust the media, don't trust the the, the mainstream narrative. If everybody is trying to tell you the same thing, just at least look at what the opposite is to make sure that you're not um, just being a victim of the crowd. Um, and I guess I'll finish on the positive note that I've noticed that a lot more people are, um, you know, throwing away the the masks and and uh the passes just of their own accord and i think that's good i think uh, i'd love to see more of that and i'm sure we will mm. here in new zealand and around the i mean adesanya put up a really good few stories on his instagram the other day we were showing clips of him traveling around the states you know thousands of people all around him trying to get a photo no mask not a mask in sight nothing and then he showed a video from his friend who was in the middle of queen street at a busy intersection and it's like five people and yeah, you know New Zealand we are stuck behind the rest of the world so what everybody's getting COVID everybody's catching it and then getting on with their lives um so yeah I think we just need to embrace the the freedom of wearing no masks and no passes and just you know, try and get back that normal see that we've lost for so long thanks Simon and my and my final thought is very much in the same vein you, you know for me this episode is that a theme of just encouraging people not to forget about their personal autonomy? I think there are there are so many influences and so many different pressures on um, general life and society at the moment where you could almost be forgiven for forgetting that you have a choice in all things. And I just want to encourage people to think about that and then also realize how much influence you you can have to create a positive life for yourself and for those around you as well so um thank you to everybody that's been checking out the episodes uh i get feedback now and then which is really cool Th thank you for thank you for commenting whatever your feedback is we always appreciate it but for now Thank you for being a part of the channel. Thank you for being a part of the journey. Please stay awesome, Simon. And we'll see you all in the next one.